Welcome to this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network. An interesting week. Cattle down $3. Cattle being purchased out to August 16th and maybe even beyond. Add to that, where are we at on weights? Condition of these cattle that are being sold. And of course, playing the futures market. Lots to look at, as you can see. Brad Coyman on the screen with me. He's with Coyman, Coyman and Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. So let's start out uh, disappointing cash this week. When I saw on Thursday talk of cash being down $3 in Nebraska, that doesn't bode well for our cattlemen. No. And uh, yeah, it did very disappointing. And, you know, the levels of 125 last week, um, which I know we sold cattle. I sold cattle that way last week. Uh, that way, and, and 125 isn't even a runaway. I'm not sure that those cattle will make any money. It depends on the performance. So, um, you know, to, to, to lose $3 in a week seemed a little severe. I was a bit surprised. I thought that the Packer probably uh, would uh, want to play ball a little more like he seems to have been lately, uh, given the political climate of, of, the, of the cattle industry. Uh, but he was able to get cattle bought lower and disappointingly so <clears throat> in some cases up here where people are selling cattle for like 195 you know, clear out to a month from now. Um, um, you know, the South doesn't do, uh, when the South markets cattle, I don't think they do a very good job in a lot of respects. But the one thing that they do better than us is they don't do this 30 days out front stuff. Um, you know, that's a 14 day delivery window. Now they do way too many formulas. Don't get me wrong. You know that. But, mm -hmm. you know, this idea that what some of us want to, want to give these backers 30 days of inventory come on folks this is a mistake um so we've given all the leverage away but anyway you know on the other hand if you were a packer why would you be willing to do that a month from now if you really truly thought you could buy cattle cheaper why would you not wait so um you know there are some things about the market that still have me feeling optimistic and uh, you know we got to work through a little bit of a supply issue in the south but there are things about the market that I think are okay. You talk about that supply issue and what is this week number three that we've talked about tight supplies in the north and the south having abundant numbers? At least three I would say it feels like it's all I've been talking about. Um, the supply in the north Susan is, is less than what the industry thought less than I thought. And uh, in fact, I, I have said to anybody that stands still long enough to listen that I, I believe right now for the middle to the end of July in my area, um, which has a lot of cattle, I think we're as current as we were in 2014. That's saying a lot. Um, unfortunately, it's the casualty of the economy of the industry is part of the reason that we don't have as many cattle, empty pens, even a whole of feedlots, uh, empty and for sale. Um, because of the economics of the last two years. Um, the, the supply problem is the snag in the South, Kansas and Texas both. Um, I think we're making progress. I mean, any, anybody that's been in these parking lots of these packing houses in, in Nebraska and, and uh, uh, somewhere near Sioux City um, would, would, uh, would, would note that there's plenty of trucks with uh, license plates from the South. So they're shipping cattle, which is what they got to do it. Let's get them dead. Um, so making progress, but there, there's a couple of little things, Susan, that I think are interesting. One is the weights and the other is the grade. Um, normally this time of the year, the weights have one single trend to go up, okay? It's because of the calendar. It's because of what we t typically have on feed this time of year. We've got a calf now that's starting to mature physically right and 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 by because of the days on feed they grow more well the weights actually have been flat to slightly declining grade um is well grade generally has been much better but that's a long story a lot of that's because of camera grading i think but the grade lately the last three weeks has deteriorated slightly it takes days anybody that's a cattle feeder that's listening today or watching today knows that it takes days on feed to get grade right so it looks to me like we're starting to get a little less days on some of these cattle too which means we're getting more current right so you know does any of that make a difference today maybe not uh but that trend definitely makes a difference. And I think, you know, the premium in the futures here is justified because I think the industry is starting to see that you're going into, we got to solve this little problem here in a month or so of these too many cattle in the South. But when we do, um, you know, I, I think this market's set for a big advance. You talk about playing the, the futures market, as you put it before we started this. Looking at that, what are we seeing for our cattle producer? 
first I got to give a disclaimer that playing yes. is kind of a dangerous word, you know, but uh, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, as one tries to analyze why the futures are doing what they're doing, right? Um, sometimes I have to get a little bit smart alecky because uh, I'm the dinosaur, right? You know, I mean, the futures are supposed to be trading what we think the market's going to be, not what the market was last Thursday or not what it was yesterday. And yeah, I'm disappointed that the cash was only 122 compared to 125. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But, you know, we're supposed to be trying to, like, October cattle theoretically should be trying to, uh, 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 establish what the value of the market thinks it's going to be on the last day of October, uh, December, the last day of December. Right. Um, and you know, to me, the way the, the way the futures market have acted the last while, you know, there's no, another, another sarcastic Brad Quima take statement that, you know what, if the, if the, if, if it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, if it swims like a duck, if it flies like a duck, you know what? It's maybe a duck. And and that's what I'm starting to feel about the cattle market. You know, why is it so strong today? People call, you know, now we've just sold off to steady money. But, um, uh, you know, and they, and they go, you know, don't they know that the cash was lower? Uh, yeah, actually, the futures traders do know that, believe it or not. You know, um, so, you know, when the market and other here, you know, for those of you writing down these famous sayings, when you whip the horse, he'd better run. OK. When the news is bad, the market better sell off. And it doesn't, if it does it, it should be telling you something. So I, I'm encouraged now, now this is going to take off from right here. I don't know. We got a cattle on feed this afternoon. We got a cattle inventory report, but, um, I sure think that, uh, you know, down the road here, I've got every reason to think that we've got a chance or a reason to be somewhat optimistic. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Brad, for joining us this week. Welcome. And just a reminder, folks, commodity futures options do involve substantial risk of loss and they're not suitable for all investors. That is this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network.